Okay, get ready for this. Because an economic and technological David just delivered, well, a massive knockout punch to a Goliath weapon system. Yeah, it's pretty stunning. We are talking about a $25,000 interceptor rocket absolutely crushing one of Russia's newest, most advanced, and supposedly invisible cruise missiles. Exactly. And this isn't just, you know, a successful shot down. This is, yeah. it feels like a foundational crack in the whole concept of high cost, hyper advanced weapons being the automatic winner. Right. What's truly uh, revolutionary here is that the low cost weapon used wasn't some cutting edge million dollar missile. Not at all. But what was it? It was basically a cheap conversion kit, taking old decade old ordnance and turning it into a precision killer. Incredible. So our mission today, really, is to unpack this spectacular, almost budget friendly defense victory. What is this dirt cheap weapon, the APKWS? Mm -hmm. Why was its target, this KH-69 missile, considered almost untouchable? And maybe the biggest question, what does this stunning proof of capability mean for, well, future global defense budgets and strategy? And wait until you hear the specifics on this stealth missile, the one that uh, failed to live up to its own hype. Oh, okay. We're talking about a weapon built for speed, for invisibility designed to be carried by Russia's most elite fighter jet. The Su-57. That's the one. And that missile failed. That failure. It deals a devastating reputational blow, not just to the missile itself, but directly to their flagship fifth-generation platform. Stick around for those details. All right, let's get into it. Let's unpack this unbelievable shot and the system that actually made it possible. The event itself took place overnight, October 10th. Correct. Specifically in the area handled by the Air Command East. Ukrainian air defense units. Mm. They executed the shot down of the KH-69. And, I mean, that single act immediately changes the whole conversation around missile defense, doesn't it? It really does, because you have to look at the defender's tool here. The interceptor was an advanced precision kill weapon system, uh, APKWS for short. APKWS, got it. And crucially, it was fired from an L-3 Harris Vampire air defense launcher. Now, if you're not familiar with those names... Probably a lot of people aren't. Right. The real genius here is the combination. It's modularity and low cost working together. Okay, let's start with the APKWS itself. I mean, if it took down a stealth missile, the guidance package must be some kind of proprietary space tech, right? Something super expensive. Not at all. And that's the amazing twist here. The conversion pit. That's the key to its economic viability. Conversion kit. Yeah. The APKWS converts standard 70 millimeter unguided hydro rockets. You know, these are legacy mass produced things been used by the U.S. and allies since, well, since the Vietnam era. Hydra 70s. Wow. OK. Those are basic. Exactly. Think of the Hydra 70 like like the Ford F-150 of rockets. Simple, everywhere, gets the job done usually. The APKWS just makes it smart. So it's not even really a missile. It's an upgrade kit. It turns a decades-old dumb rocket into something smart, something accurate. It's like putting a GPS chip onto an old rotary phone. Is that too far? Uh-huh. No, that's actually a pretty good analogy. The conversion works by adding a semi-active laser seeker. BAE systems develop that. Okay, laser seeker. Right. And it adds mid-body guidance fins that steer the rocket toward whatever that laser is painting. Because you're reusing the core hardware, the rocket motor, the warhead, the cost just plummets. And that cost is... Each complete round costs around $25,000, give or take. $25,000. Compare that to traditional surface-to-air missiles. Oh, there's no comparison. Traditional specialized interceptors, they routinely cost between one, maybe five million dollars yeah. per shot. That difference is just staggering. It fundamentally flips the whole economic equation of air warfare. Completely. We know these systems, the Vampire with APKWS, they've been used since 2023, but mostly for like countering cheap, slow threats. Shahid drones, things like that. That was the primary use case, yes, countering drones. But this interception, taking out a KH-69, proves the platform is capable of destroying, well, higher tier threats. Much higher. And that Capability leap. It was confirmed pretty quickly. A Senate experts, uh, folks analyzing open source intelligence. They looked at the published footage from Ukraine's Air Force Command, saw the debris, confirmed it was the KH-69, no doubt. Which leads to a really interesting question for everyone listening. Can a $25,000 weapon, you know, fundamentally change the whole calculus of air warfare like this? Should militaries maybe prioritize quantity, this kind of affordable quantity, over super costly complexity? Let us know what you think in the comments. It's a crucial question, but it also leads us back to that laser seeker you mentioned. Because relying on a semi-active laser, well, it has limitations, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Because the APKWS, 
meeting that laser means the launcher or maybe some other asset has to continuously paint the target with the laser beam yeah. right up until impact. Exactly. It's not the high-end fire and forget technology we hear about with pricier missiles. You need line of sight and you need that constant illumination. So how does the vampire launcher fit in then? Does it solve that? Well, the vampire system is essential here. It's basically a CIOTAS system commercial off the shelf. A palletized kit designed to be mounted quickly onto the back of like a pickup truck. A pickup truck. Seriously. Seriously. It provides the necessary stabilization, the fire control, the optics, everything needed to effectively use that laser seeker on the APKWS. It transforms a common vehicle into a highly mobile, rapidly deployable, ground-based air defense system. Mobile, cheap, effective. And think about this. We're talking about a laser seeker. It hunts reflected laser light not radar signatures. Mm. So if the KH-69 was designed primarily for radar stealth with special ships and materials... That means nothing to the laser. Pretty much nothing. The laser seeker essentially bypasses its primary defensive feature. It doesn't care how invisible it is to radar, it just needs that laser spot to home in on. Okay, that makes sense. So the KH-69 stealth features were kind of useless against this specific type of weapon. That explains how they managed to hit it. Mm. Right, let's pivot then. Let's talk about the target itself, the failed stealth threat. Russia put a lot of stock in the KH-69, didn't they? Oh, absolutely. If you connect this to the bigger picture, the KH-69 is one of Russia's newest, most sophisticated air-launched cruise weapons, built by the uh, the very well-known Raduga Design Bureau. A big name in missile design. A very big name. And this missile was absolutely intended to be a modern centerpiece for them, you know, for penetrating advanced enemy air defenses. And it wasn't just like pulled out of storage. It has a specific development history aimed right at this stealth capability we're talking about. It does, yeah. It actually started life conceptually as the KH-59 MK2 back in 2009, but it was completely redesigned after 2015, specifically to incorporate features to reduce its radar cross-section. So angular shaping, radar absorbent materials, yep. the usual stealth checklist. Hmm. Exactly. The standard playbook for minimizing radar visibility and that emphasis on being nearly invisible that's precisely what makes this successful $25,000 intercept so strategically incredible. Designed to fly under the radar. And taken out by a laser beam from a system mounted on a truck. Yeah. Let's talk raw power, though, because on paper, this missile is still pretty intimidating. Yeah. Can you run through the technical specs for us? Sure. This is a heavy-duty munition. We're talking a launch weight of about 710 kilograms. That's over half a ton. Yeah. And it carries a truly massive warhead, 310 kilograms. That's... That's a lot of explosive power. Pure destruction capability there. And range. Speed. Its operational range lets it strike targets up to 290 kilometers away. Yeah. And speed-wise, it flies fast. Really fast. Yeah. It's somewhere between 700 and 1,000 kilometers per hour. So definitely not a slow-moving drone. This is a high-velocity deep strike weapon. Precisely. Not an easy target by any means. Fast, heavy, supposedly hard to see. And designed for Russia's absolute elite launch platforms. Yeah. Which aircraft are we talking about here? Critically, this missile is designed for their top fighter fleet. That includes the Su-30SM, the Su-34 strike aircraft, the Su-35S multi-role fighter, even the naval MiG-29K. Okay, their mainstays. But most notably, Russia's Su-57 stealth fighter. The KH-69 is specifically configured to fit inside the internal weapons bay of the Su-57. Internal bay for maximum stealth rate. Exactly. When your flagship stealth jet relies on internal carriage for its low observability, and the primary weapon it carries internally can be taken out by a truck-mounted, off-the-shelf rocket kit. Bro. That deals a huge blow. Not just to the missile program itself. No, but to the operational credibility, the whole concept of their most advanced and certainly most expensive jet fighter. Yeah. And Russia only started using this missile operationally against Ukraine in early 2024, correct? That's right. So this isn't about some old outdated tech failing. Mm. This defeat is fresh, it's current, and it's devastating for their narrative about advanced weaponry. Okay, so now let's connect this specific technical victory, this takedown, to the larger strategic picture. Because this interception, it didn't happen in a vacuum, did it? No, absolutely not. That's a key point. It occurred during one of the largest combined missile and drone attacks on Ukraine this month. We mentioned the date, October 10th. This means the defenders were under maximum pressure, maximum duress. And this brings up a really important question. How do you defend against that sheer volume? 
mm. especially when you need to stay financially solvent. The Russians use these saturation tax deliberately to overwhelm defenders, force them to burn through their most expensive interceptors. Right, try to bankrupt the defense. Exactly. The scale of this particular attack on the 10th was immense. Russia launched over 460 aerial threats in total, trying to just flood the air defense system. 460, what did that include? It was a mix. You had the slow Shahid drones, but also the hypersonic Kinzhal missiles, the Iskander ballistic missiles, and several of these KH-59 and KH-69 cruise missiles, all coming in at wildly different speeds, different altitudes, different profiles. That sounds like the ultimate stress test for any air defense network. And if you use, say, a million-dollar interceptor to kill a $20,000 drone... You lose the economic war instantly, even if you shoot it down. Right. And look, Ukrainian defense has reported shooting down the majority of those incoming threats, including 405 drones and multiple ballistic and cruise missiles, which is an incredible feat in itself, make no mistake. Definitely. But the low-cost kill of the KH-69 is the headline here for a very good reason. The implication is just massive, isn't it? The successful use of a low-cost, mass-produced system, this vampire APKWS combo, mm. against a high-priority stealth target like the KH-69, mm -hmm. and doing it within the chaos of a massive saturation attack, uh. it completely validates the strategy of using agile, economically efficient defenses, right? It really does. It means the defenders don't have to spend 40 times more on their interceptor than the aggressor spent on the incoming threat. Yeah. They can maintain quantity and capability at the same time. That's the game changer. That adaptability is everything. This event really shows that the true vulnerability of these super advanced, super expensive weapons, it isn't necessarily finding an equally advanced technological counter. It's finding something else. It's finding a cost-effective, adaptable defense system that you can deploy at scale. If the aggressor has to spend, say, 20 or 30 times more on their fancy missile than you spend on the countermeasure, well, their long-term strategy just becomes inherently unsustainable. Regardless of how stealthy or fast their missile is on paper. Precisely. The economics just don't work for them anymore. We might be fully entering the age where these dedicated, multi-billion dollar defense programs can be seriously challenged, maybe even defeated, by smart, modular, and importantly, affordable, off-the-shelf technology a fascinating and perhaps revolutionary moment in air warfare. It certainly feels that way. The paradigm might actually be shifting. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, Hi. where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.